that's why I think that uh, Joker is such a powerful movie because at least I would believe that a lot of most people, or at least I did, felt some connection to the main character, that there are some aspects that we can all relate because we've always felt like an outsider mm. at some point in our life. We've all sort of had down times in our like you know where our mood is down Mm. and uh maybe like things in life didn't like turn out the way we really wanted it to Welcome back to Khan Vision. It's your host with the most, Mutagi Khan. And today is the very first podcast of 2020. Today, our guest will be Ben. Ben is a nursing student and he has a lot of interesting things to share. So I hope you enjoy this one. And if you do, make sure you like and share this video. Obi-Wan Kenobi. I don't know why they said Obi-Wan to be Ben Kenobi that like a plot twist are you a star wars fan i watched the most recent uh wait did i watch the most recent one i didn't although i'm like a huge star wars fan actually yeah i went went to see it with my girlfriend two weeks ago yeah do you like that did i like it yeah yeah it's all right it's star wars isn't like my favorite like series or anything but Mm. so you're not like a hardcore fan of star wars no 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 yeah i knew this guy who got like all of his tattoos were like star wars really yeah like two full sleeves on his fingers like everything Mm. i don't know i'm not that kind of a fan (laughs) but (laughs) but one good movie that i did watch and i have to say is like my favorite movie now is uh joker joker yeah have you seen that one no but a lot of my friends they were they've been telling that that's really good movie and i should probably watch it i watched it twice it was that good and and you sort of it's one of those movies that every single time you watch it you sort of uh, unveil or reveal like new things get revealed things that you didn't like notice previously and 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 this sort of thing and um first i went to go see it with one of my friends and first i was like nah nah it's gonna be one of those other like superhero movies like i'm not Mm. like interested in those anymore like they were cool like early when you were 13 or 14 yeah. years old <laughs> and then uh i watched it and i was just like like my whole mind was blown i was like this is like one of the best movies i've seen like in such a long time so then i couldn't stop thinking about it so i went and watched it with my girlfriend again mm. what do you think what do you find more most entertaining in the movies is it the story or is it like some people like the actions and yeah. and unrealistic stuff yeah cgi for me i think what makes a good movie is like it has the capacity to make you feel something yeah i think a lot of movies these days like they're just trying to like you said like it's just about the action or it's just about having a happy ending or something like that but if there's a movie where we're not talking about the time i happy ending no <laughs> yeah. just to make clear yeah. <laughs> like movie like happy endings but you know if if a movie ends tragically or if a movie sort of makes you walk out of the cinema sort of like oh kind of like feeling like that that's what i think is a good movie because not all stories you know have to be always like ending well or anything like that so Mm -hmm. if it can make you feel really something it's it's you know like real i find i i find it kind of uncomfortable yeah do you understand what i mean yeah like yeah. unsettling unresting you know yeah like, oh. and, and that's what i mean like that's what i think it is what like actually makes a really good movie mm. it makes you feel that like ugh, uncomfort you know and i remember there was this one almost part like of, the the feel good after you puke yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but there's there's this one part, i'm not going to do any spoilers or anything mm. but there was this one section in the joker and you know something had happened and with the character it's it's about his journey he has some mental health problems and stuff like that Mm. and uh he had been sort of going through this thing and then it didn't end up being true Mm. because his mental health had sort of made him to believe something Mm. and once that was revealed i remember the first time i watched that my entire face just went numb just Mm. like the cinematic sort of um techniques they were using with with the with the music and everything was just Mm. so like dawning you know it was just like i felt numb in my face just like oh my god (laughs) and especially because you are a nurse or studying to become a nurse so you can see the mental health and you understand it probably from 
you know, from your studies as well. Yeah, yeah. You have, have, I would say, deeper understanding than an average Joe. Yeah, definitely. And I definitely, at first, uh, when I started, we did a course in mental health. And then uh, we, um, I did like a Tua Haratolo. I did uh, six weeks working in uh, Omakot. It's like a supported home for Mm. people who are having... Tua Haratolo is... um, uh, in, like internship. internship? Yeah, yeah, internship. And he, uh, and it was very challenging for me in the beginning to mm. sort of like understand uh, mental health because I've I've gone through like hard times in my life and stuff like that. And it's just like, well, you just, you know, you just go, go, like just man up, man up and yeah. do it. And then, you know, uh, then when you read about it and you're actually working with these people, it was just really um, eye opening for me to really understand truly like mental health in a much deeper level mm. i'm not an expert at all mm. in this but it's i'm just glad that i sort of uh have some insights have, a little bit yeah. more deeper than uh, average joe I would yeah say. definitely yeah and i think it's really good thing just to sort of apply in sort of normal day to day because mm. you know you might walk down the road and be like oh who's this like freak or whatever mm. but then you know my more natural reaction now is like okay like like what's going on like mm. there might there's definitely the there's the things that we don't understand and, yeah. and it's hard to understand and also like if i cut you and i cut <laughs> similar uh, have like a similar kind of a cut then we can kind of i can feel it uh, it's like oh it's a cut you know yeah yeah and you know it, it's a cut there is nothing to it but mental health cuts or mental cuts that we get they're so different because it it has to do with your brain how how you receive the thing because yeah. you know like uh, this sitting can be very intimidating for someone but then it can be very relaxing to other people yeah, so yeah. you know although the outside world is affecting or or, or you know going about in a certain motion mm. but the one who is in the right might feel like oh this is very fast you know yeah, yeah, yeah so definitely. it's very hard to like comprehend especially like Myself as well, like you said, like I never, I wouldn't say that I had like a ser- serious depression. Yeah, I, I yeah. do have like depression every now and then. FOMO is something that I feel quite a lot, you know, mm. fear of missing out. Yeah. You know, like the grass is greener in the other side. Yeah, yeah. And, and those feels very terrible, although nothing yeah. happens. And you yeah. feel like lying in your bed and like not getting up and just want to sleep and eat and yeah, sleep. Yeah, and sometimes you lose the appetite as well. We all, I think, and as well, that's why I think that uh, Joker is such a powerful movie because at least I would believe that a lot of most people, or at least I did, felt some connection to the main character, that there are some aspects that we can all relate because we've always felt like an outsider Mm. at some point in our life. We've all sort of had down times in our, like, you know, where our mood is down Mm. and uh, maybe like things in life didn't like turn out the way we really wanted it to. Mm. And that's why I think that uh, it's like such a powerful movie in that sense. Mm. And I, I think, you know, because it, it has also been a bit of a controversial movie. Mm. Uh, how so like controversial? Like how did some people get upset with it or? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I, I think it was really like insightful, definitely. Mm. And I should... maybe it was just sort of like, um, it hit too close to home for some people. Mm. So they kind of, like just blocked it like completely out like no this is a bad movie like and i totally get it because sometimes we do we behave in a certain way just to shield ourselves from the negative emotions or to facing the ego gets hurt sometimes yeah definitely definitely there there have been times that i get my ego gets hurt for for a very weird things and I'm kind of ashamed of myself. Like, yeah. well, why Why do I take it so personally? Mm-hmm. But about movies, I don't watch that much movies, which is right. weird because I do a lot of content creation and I do film yeah. um, videos, vlogs, and try to get into documentaries. I love filming and I love storytelling and, and visual things. The thing is about movie, I, I'm such a workaholic mm. uh, that... I feel like I'm wasting time or playing right, right. games. You know, I feel like nothing is happening in mm. the real world. I'm, I could use this time to read or learn something about yeah, yeah. editing or, or anything, you know, yeah, that yeah. might help me. Definitely. But sometimes I think you like need 
unwinding downtime yeah and you need to like take a break from big projects and stuff like that because it is it is good for your health otherwise you might end up burning yourself out yeah like i just took a step back from this project that i've been working on i took like two months just like don't want to think about it you know i'm just going to put it to the side i'm just but gonna, it's like, very hard to not think about it i know it's yeah. very hard like i went to uk end of last year 2019 mm. And uh, I went to see family and friends and I have a friend of mine who was like advising me a little bit about my projects and, yeah. you know, uh, telling his own opinions. But most of the time I was just sleeping, eating and yeah. sleeping. Yeah. And it's UK. The water tastes horrible. Yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, but Finnish water is so much better. Yeah. You know, like we are really privileged to have amazing Definitely, water. Yeah. Um, and I was like, yeah, I'm just going to edit. But then... Yeah, I was just sleeping. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm missing well, out on yeah. UK. Well, you should you should listen <laughs> listen to your body. And sometimes you just need to leave your normal environment to be able to sort of give yourself a chance to sort to mm. like take take that break for sure. And then when you do take that break and you come back, you have a fresh mind. Mm. Like for me, the biggest thing when I took that two month break, I also went on holiday with my girlfriend to Thailand. Mm. I came back and I was just like, all right, okay, just. Take it back to the basics, you know, mm. like, let's, let's go back to the beginning. I was thinking way too far ahead too soon. And it's like, okay, this is maybe the vision and the accomplishments I should be getting in a five-year period of time. But what's the first thing that I need to do? And that's, it's like, That's okay. the crucial question exactly. that we should ask ourselves that how to zoom in and zoom out yeah, at yeah. the right time. So there's always that end vision and it's so easy always to have your mind on that end vision, mm. but you have to be setting these small goals along the way that is sort of there's constructive sort of meaning to the things that you do that will then alter like end up achieving that end vision you said it meaning and ask the question why there is a book about it i forgot the author's name yeah. that ask ask the question why or ask the why or something like that why are we doing something what does it mean to us you know yeah and we were talking just before we started this podcast that what does it mean to me because you know like i do have 300 subscribers from zero in yeah. one year for for con vision and that's pretty good that's almost like one a day you know, yeah. Congrats. <laughs> well it yeah like i'm really proud of that mm. my accomplishment because i never thought that i could have taken this so far yeah at the same time the business world is very brutal right because yeah. 300 ain't nothing i ain't gonna get any sponsorship or anything like that yeah uh so the question is what if am i wasting my time mm. what is what's the worth mm -hmm. and what i why am i doing this what what do i want to achieve right. and you know like having very honest conversation with yourself mm -hmm. i think with the males we part of us is like greatness we want to do things that are yeah. great yeah. leave a legacy you mm -hmm. know so yeah, we feel true. like we have existed and mattered in this world i yeah. think it comes from there yeah yeah it's definitely it, it, it's definitely like a really uh cultural thing i think it also it's also not just like certain cultures but every culture sort of has this from mm. my understanding at least like mm. every they're always everybody wants to leave their mark but it's pretty narrow-minded when you then consider like truly how small we are you know? yeah and it's kind of a shallow in a way but then i think the key is and i might be wrong to find multiple things that you like multiple reasons and one of the reasons yeah. is like okay i leave a documentation behind mm. about my life to my kids and my grandkids and they get to know mm. who their forefather were yeah uh, what kind of a person he was and also when i'm old i can just you know when nobody wants to see me so i yeah. can just sit down and watch youtube yeah <laughs> but the other 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 thing i think is like i mean as long as you're doing doing something relatively productive or interesting you're not really wasting your time exactly one of my uh like the first uh, mentors I ever had, he was my Muay Thai coach in back in Australia. Oh, I did Muay Thai as well. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. Uh, I was training for seven, about seven, eight years, like proper every like in five, Thailand. No, in Australia. Australia. But I also yeah. went to Thailand two times for training camps. Yeah, they're brutal there. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I just watch their training to get mm. motivated. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. carry on. And he, uh, one, I remember one time because I mean, I am Finnish, I'm a Finnish citizen and you know, we have our military service here mm. and we were, uh, on, on a road trip and 
you know, I was just saying like, okay, like do I just finished my first degree in Australia mm. and do I stay here and work and do my job, get a mm. house, get a wife, you know, like th- live that sort of normal just thing. Just get the wife from the shelf. Oh, this one. Yeah, exactly. fine. <laughs> or like what, whatever, like whatever yeah. you're into. And uh, then, or like, should I go to the army? Because, you know, I was getting the letter every year from the Finnish the military. Reminding. And then he was like... Press the snooze button. Yeah. Maybe next year. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I was basically pressing the snooze button because, I mm. mean, I had to finish my studies. And then the studies ended. And I'm like, okay, what am I going to do now? And he just get, turns to me and he goes, man, you know, when you're old and you're on your rocking chair and there's your grandchildren sitting on the floor, like, do you want to be the guy who ha- always has an interesting story to tell? Mm. Or do you want to be the one who says, like, no, you work hard at school, you go to university, you do your job and you work, you grind and you make your money and you get a house and, and you, you mm-hmm. know, like, is it, is it about like ha- living your life or mm-hmm. sort of, I mean, and of course mm-hmm. you, everyone needs to like sort of decide what is best for them and what's mm-hmm. best for their mm-hmm. families. But you know, you just put it in such a good way that like, do I want to like live a life with many rich experiences mm-hmm. and sort of grow as a human being Mm. or do i want to sort of grind and be that supportive Mm. sort of person and i thought like well fuck it i'll go you know Mm -hmm. then i moved here and 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 uh just like all right signed up and and then i came here and i stayed for a year and really enjoyed. how long did you do your military service i did the full year full year because i I made the conscious decision like i'm gonna come here because i had the option not to go so Mm. i just thought like may as well come here yeah and i i totally agree with you if you're doing it then just go all in and get all the experiences you can get out of it and you know leadership training although i haven't been i've I've been only for six months yeah um Part of the reason is because my parents, they wanted me to move on with my studies. You know, the mm. safe life, like you said, like, oh, you know, just yeah. get a degree and, you know, get a house, get a wife, and blah, blah, blah. Um, but you were saying about the grind. Mm. I think the true grind, or there is many forms of the grind, but you also grind, you know, yeah, yeah. but in a different way. Yeah, you definitely. just grind with waves that are very uncertain, but yeah. then you get to see the views that are that most of the people can't you know when you when you go as an australian you know about the surfing mm. everyone surfs there right yeah. <laughs> so uh, you get to see the horizons when you go to those big waves you don't know whether you can handle it or not you're just wobbling and just yeah. going there but but the guys who never take the chances never take the risks yeah and i'm not saying that you have to do there's different kinds of risks in yeah. life you know so those who don't take any chances. They don't get to see the views. And yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I feel like that's how it is in life. Yeah, definitely. It's, that's totally true. About the army. So whenever you say in abroad, yeah, I remember like I go to UK every now and then. Yeah. And whenever like there is a, a mentor of mine and an uncle of mine and he's, mm. he used to be, he's a legend in many things, mm. but he started like a Muslim scout thing as well. And he is always very impressed about my, you know, the fact that I went to an army because it's yeah. not a very normal thing in many mm. parts of the world. Uh, so he very he speaks of the army experience very highly. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, yeah. <clears throat> you know, I feel like, oh, yeah, well, <laughs> it doesn't feel like that because yeah. I've been there mm. and I know what it is. And I'm not saying that it's it's not a good experience. I'm just saying that we have an idea of like army man being very like you know yes sir disciplined, and, disciplined and, and, and whatnot and and, and then you go to finish army where everyone has to go yeah, so yeah. not everyone is like yes sir there are people like that you know yeah. top notch and then there are people like me <laughs> <laughs> but and i think like a really good thing about the fact that everybody needs to go to the army in, mm. in finland is that you literally work with the entire spectrum of the capacity of what a human being can be like you'll you'll meet some of the smartest people mm. you know and then you'll also meet some of the dumbest people yeah and you learn how to sort of like live and work with with them and then you sort of you know even if you didn't connect do... and the brotherhood is different yeah yeah yeah, yeah the definitely. bond is different just 
and there's a lot of people like you said you would never like hang out with them not mm. anything necessarily wrong with them it's just you're not into the things that they are into yeah, yeah. or the personalities or whatever but it's just because you've been sleeping in the same room for for a long time you feel like ah oh, that's my homeboy you know yeah, that's yeah. my that's my guy and yeah. and yeah it's it's amazing experience yeah. But it was yeah, I, I really I really enjoyed it and I'm I'm always sort of like sometimes my friends are going to do their like uh catch up training. You know, you people... I've been there three times. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I actually signed up for to be a uh, active volunteer okay. to for trainings cuz yeah. I you know the my philosophy is like hey you don't get to wake up every day and have a gun and and dress up <laughs> like an army guy and yeah, do yeah. like army stuff. Yeah. So every opportunity I get, I try to be there because it, it's hard things, and it's 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 a grind. Yeah. It annoys you when you're like five days without shower in the yeah. in the forest, but once you come back from there, mm. everything, all the nonsense, you know. Yeah, all the things, all the noise kind of goes down, and it you're like, "Hey, does. I think I have pretty good. I have shower and I have food and yeah, exactly. clean clothes. Exactly. So I feel yeah. good." <laughs> you know? Like all those small problems, and I, I totally agree. When you're out in the forest for like five days straight, and you know it's cold and you're hungry, and you know you can barely tie your shoes because you're, you're so tired, you're just surviving, you know. And then you come back to your like nice apartment, and mm. you just you're bed is like softer smell the and, incense yeah, and exactly. you know everything and, like your coffee is tasting better and yeah. it's like so like the shower it's just like privileged to have a shower you know and like i i mean i uh was sort after the army uh i went back to australia had i then had to move back here because mm. of some circumstances and uh and i was sort of like longing that sort of being outside all the time and, mm. and sort of surviving you know mm. so i got my hunting license mm. and now i'm going maybe like three four times a year for like big sort of you know two three day trips just like being outside hunting elks or uh at the moment i'm just hunting birds birds yeah okay. yeah, yeah so so you eat them or yeah 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 so we hunt them and then we what eat. kind of birds so it's like the uh forest chickens Mm. so i mean if you know like the uh, big ones they're pretty big right yeah kind of like turkeys yeah turkey yeah, it's not a turkey but it's yeah. like a turkey kind of delicious animal. yeah they taste good definitely so how would you prepare one uh well you can just like cut the breast off and just like sear it so wild birds are not like chicken yeah because they're I mean, a chicken, bit harder aren't they? yeah it's like gamey they taste wild you yeah. know uh but i mean i've done everything from like slow cooking or then just like um making some like pasta dish with, mm. with like the with the breast so it's yeah really how, mu how, how much like we need to talk about the hunting thing because i'm right. I, i would like to get yeah. into that as well because yeah, yeah. it's kind of a manly thing you know we, <laughs> like men used to hunt for yeah. a very long time yeah. in history it's really cool but i doubt they'll give me because i'm muslim and you know i have to yeah. but in <laughs> finland i probably in finland yeah, i will you get would. it yeah you, you could like i i made my like i made myself go through the uh new york's like border borders you know yeah so i think i'm cool i'm okay yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you so, just gotta go like so either you do like a one week course mm. uh or was it like you have like three classes and mm. then you do the exam or then you just like get the textbook and go do the exam mm. uh, my girlfriend for my birthday present two years ago mm. bought both of us like the classes and then like pay for the exam as well so wow cool we learned from like a professional like a real and he's like a, a ecologist like a guy who's taking care of the forest mm. and sort of not a biologist but the guy who's taking care of the ecosystems yeah. and stuff like that so and that needs to be done to keep Absolutely. the population down yeah. otherwise it will mess up the ratio of the predator prey and predators yeah definitely yeah. there's not that many like predators in finland i mean there's like foxes there's And there's bears and there's wolves, mm -hmm. but even like with the bears and wolves, there's not that many. Mm. But Before. it will increase if yeah, you don't definitely. keep the uh, the birds and and the prey in in check. Yeah, definitely. Mm. And I mean, uh, with birds and stuff, you know, they're they're every animal is playing a certain role in the ecosystem, and if mm. the population is getting too high, mm. it it might sort of 
ruin the landscape in some mm. sort of way. Or, you know, uh, for example, like rabbits are digging holes. Mm. And I mean, these birds as well are digging holes. Mm. So you could imagine, you know, if we're not hunting at all mm. and there's like just huge populations of rabbits and mm. birds and these animals who are borrowing, it's basically going to ruin the forest. Mm. And then they're going to destroy their own homes. Mm. And, you know, um, then there's not going to be like enough food to go around and stuff like that. Well, it's like, not what the, <laughs> you know, the vegans they don't see eye to eye with this yeah. but then I, we can agree to disagree yeah. but hey let's go back to the point okay. that how did we meet up basically yeah. so wanna... when i don't remember what month it was it was about like six months ago ish about six months ago at the ship startup festival yeah it yeah. was cool you know how yeah. i got myself into that no idea so you know the daniel who the the latino guy who was yeah. shout out to daniel um he was he we connected through Instagram. Mm. He was just checking my podcast and mm -hmm. he liked them. And then, you know, he was like, hey, I have a similar kind of visions and stuff, you know, like, hey, we need to meet up. Then I was like, uh, no, he said, like, I have similar kind of visions that you have. Then I was like, then we need to meet up, my friend. And yeah. then we got together and I, I got myself introduced to different people. You know, he has some... Uh, friends who do rapping like in in Spanish and Portuguese okay, you yeah, know? Yeah. so you know it was amazing and he was like having a phone call in this very house we yeah. were cooking and you know like planning some videos and whatnot nice. and then he was like hey do you want to come and have like a live podcast in a ship starter festival in Kotka like before that I didn't know anything yeah. about ship starter festival then I was like you know what I would really lo love to do that. And yeah. it's like, okay, cool. I'll hook you up and let's stay in touch. So okay. after that, awesome. I just yeah. came there and it was an amazing experience to see people who grind, you know, cause yeah. they, uh, with their own projects. Mm. Yes, I'm not like having a similar kind of business like many of the, uh, you know, participants had. But, you know, to see people passionate and work on their projects and yeah. obsession, almost yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it was amazing. Yeah. So, I mean, I was one of the uh, participants, competitors, competitors, like, yeah, yeah. like uh, participants in, in that, in that, uh, and also top startup. 10 or something. Yeah. And I yeah. was lucky enough to get in the top 10. I was like totally shocked because I just had an idea mm. and it was just still basically in the, con and it still is also in the conceptualization stage, mm. but there was other startups who are already having customers. They already have money and all that sort of stuff. So when they announced that I was in the top 10, I was like. Like, I don't even know what I'm going to do with this money if I were to win. But like, sure, mm. I'll take it, you know. Mm. Um, but yeah, that was like, it's, I only got introduced to the startup scene about exactly a year ago. Oh, really? Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, I have to say that because I was doing different stuff. I was like part of the volunteers crew yeah. kind of. So, but uh, my job was to have the uh, interview that we had. Yeah. And it's on YouTube. You guys check it out. I'll leave the link below. But I have to say, because I did get time to watch the pitch. Yeah. And, you know, I remember when you came to the stage. Yeah. There was a different energy. Right. And I was like, I don't know why, but I felt like take my money. or like, right. yeah. I felt like, okay, this here is a leader that I want to yeah. follow. Here is a guy that I want right. to be friends with. Here's a guy that I trust, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and it, I, I did see some of the master classes and mm -hmm. that's what the investors were saying that what we look for is not perfect idea all the time because, yeah. you know, the idea might, you know, you might have 40% of the idea and someone brings 10, another yeah, guy brings 10s right. and then you have like the team and it goes on. And he said, like, we're looking for the right people to work with as well. Yeah, you know, people yeah. who take responsibility and have the leadership skills. Mm -hmm have the skills to work as a group and take it further. And, yeah. you know, I saw all of those things like in you mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, I didn't awesome. understand anything that you said. Right, <laughs> the business right. was kind of complicated for yeah. me. Yeah. Like yeah. I did get some of it, mm. but uh, like I'm not professional enough to even yeah. ask the right questions. Right. Okay. But I was like, I don't know, but I have a feeling that this is going to go well. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah, That's, yeah. that was like the hunch that I got. Yeah, yeah, because I'm yeah, because it was an after party and you basically came to introduce yourself. And yeah, and we just basically ended up hanging out like the, the rest of the evening. Yeah, it yeah. was really cool. So that was that was fun. And it was really like really fun. Uh, I remember if it was like a weekend or 
weekdays or whatever. But anyways, mm. it was really, really fun just to like hang out. And I think the biggest thing is like hanging out with like-minded people. Mm. And I think it's really important because I think we have the capacity to sort of, um, to an extent, especially in Finland, mm. we have the privilege of controlling our environment and we get to choose what kind of people we're hanging out with. And I've sort of came to realize, like I said, like this time last year, that you kind of need to be around the people that you want to be like. Yeah. So if you want to be like a scientist, well, you got to hang out with scientists. Mm. Or if you want to be a business owner, entrepreneur, you should probably take the time and effort to go and meet and make friends with people who have started their own business and are entrepreneurs because... Yeah. <clears throat> the thing is when you have that support network you know that's what's really going to make you grow and if you have a question that needs to be answered it's just like okay well i'll just call my friend and they can help me sort of guide me to the next level or whatever or mm. do you know an investor that i need like do you know any investors you know you send like messages to everybody and and then it's sort of like building that support network. Support network is so important. Like there is a saying that you're an average of the five closest people that you hang around with. Yeah. So are these people grinders? What well, mm. it doesn't mean that they have to necessarily have a business, but yeah. they need to have something that they're working on. To me, for example, yeah. when I when I like I find myself uh, enjoying being around people who have ambition and mm. and they're working on something and i and then the way i like what i try to do is i try to bring some values i like okay fine you want to do that okay cool yeah. if you need any kind of video material or photo shoots or anything you know let me know yeah and i'm i'm willing to do that for free yeah obviously i'm not doing anything nothing is free mm. you know i was like talking to a friend of mine yesterday and he, asking him why doesn't he like do youtube and he's like i don't have enough time to film and edit yeah, and i was yeah. like why don't you go to a school a editing mm. school and ask someone to do that or you know start a business with them and he he said like yeah but people don't want to do anything for free then i said that's not free yeah you know me doing video material right yeah. now it's not free because mm. I'm learning experience. I'm learning, you know, things from you yeah. and, you know, the whole experience. I'm having a good time. This is not free and this is yeah. not guaranteed. But I think we're so entitled. I think for me, at least, this sort of like uh, better work ethic didn't come until about my mid-20s mm. where I sort of started to realize that, like, uh, you know, I should put more time into sort of showing that I'm working hard or something because when I was in high school like I was just like getting by and with my first degree mm. as well I was just like getting by doing the bare minimum you mm. know and, and sort of focusing on other aspects of my life what changed you how, how did you find your work ethic honestly like the big okay so one part that changed me was actually going to military mm. uh, because it taught me so much about responsibility and just sort of like keeping your shit together mm. keeping shit clean uh you know Routines. keeping things organized like this sort of thing and i that kind of stuck with me and uh after that you know you know just constantly going through failures in your life and then just sort of reflecting back and thinking like okay, like this has happened because this has happened and then you can sort of like take Make it back, sense of it. you know? Mm -hmm. And basically what happened to me was uh, I lived in Australia and I lived in Australia for 14 years altogether. I lived in Hong Kong two years in between there and uh, graduated from university mm -hmm. or it was a, it was a college uh, at, in public health and sport and also in education. And then I came to the Finnish military mm. and I came back to Australia and I tried to get my uh, citizenship and due to the selection of my studies and the college that I went into uh, my application basically got rejected mm. and I got two weeks notice to leave the country well wow. so I had my ex-girlfriend living there I had my hobbies you know your was, life yeah, my entire life. I just had to pack everything and, and then in two weeks I, I left. And then I came here and thankfully, you know, 
my I have family here and my mum and dad are living in Tampere, mm. which is about two hours north from Helsinki. And uh you know, the first week or two I was just like sitting on my bed thinking like shit. Everything that I had worked for in the last like teenage, you know, the entire ten year period, mm. tw- fifteen year period, you know, everything that I had sort of been aiming for in my mm. life was like taken away from me you what happened after that when you know you just realized that i've spent a big portion of my life obviously it's nothing now that you look back at your yeah. life because you know i remember when i was like 20 21 i was like oh i'm old i need to get do all these things yeah. and yeah. if things don't go according to the plan it might it, it, it's very depressing Yeah. So how did you, what happened next? Well, then, you know, uh, I just sort of accepted the fact that like, okay, well, I can't live in the country where I sort of had envisioned and worked to live in Mm. for my life. So I basically just had to reevaluate my life and think, okay, well, what's the first thing that I need to do? So I went and got a job, you know, and luckily I, my finish was not, so good good. so i was really lucky to actually even get a job like Mm. so easily in the first place it only took me about two or three weeks it's the good looks that you have and the (laughs) aussie aussie accent yeah Yeah. (laughs) and uh you know then i I was working for a month and uh, sorry i I was working and then after a month i met my girlfriend and she was a hairdresser in in tampere as well we met through tinder i think this is one of like the rare stories where like relationships like really came from like, is it then, though is it though i, I think I don't, actually actually now when you say it mm. actually a lot of couples that i do meet do meet over tinder people are so like this is slightly a off tangent yeah people are you know people don't meet each other the way we used to back in yeah. the days and yeah. people don't even go to talk to people like we used to in the back in mm. the days like in our parents age you know people would it would be normal to like, hey, my name is, you yeah. know, so and so. Nice to meet you. Mm. But now it's like, hey, my name is so and so. It's like, yeah. So what? Yeah. What exactly. you want? You know, yeah, weirdo. Weird. Yeah, <laughs> but if you culture, text right? them through, you know, an app, then yeah. it's like, well, you're okay. you're you're more safe behind the screen, and you can mm. sort of create, you can construct what you want that person to think mm. of you. Like you can create a kind of character when you're behind a, a screen because you can sort of like rewrite and delete and edit whatever you're going to send to that person mm. but so uh, that's that's why we have the catfish it was <laughs> yeah. it was really funny because i was you know i was making my cv and i showed to my colleague mm. and she was like you're catfishing you don't look like that yeah. <laughs> but anyway yeah. you were talking about so you met your girlfriend yeah. and i was working and then you know i was just talking to my family members and and they're like well because i had also studied education in in sydney and basically the reason why i didn't get my my uh my citizenship was because the place where i had studied it did not meet the criteria for international students to work as teachers in Australia mm. because the standard that they hold for international teachers is much higher mm. than that of domestic teachers. Mm. And it was like something to do with the education where I didn't meet a certain criteria. And it was to do with how many days was I actually working in a high school. Mm. And I missed it by five days, literally oh. five days. So I studied an entire year to get my dip ed, diploma in education and basically they had failed to sort of provide a good enough degree for international students to get a job in Australia. And because, you know, I'm a Finnish citizen and I had even lived there with my family for 14 years, it didn't matter because I was always under a international student visa. Mm. So they considered me to be an interna- uh, uh, international teacher. Mm. Although you lived like most of your life there. Yeah. And I, even when I like walk around uh, in Finland and stuff, they're like, hey, then the Australian guy, you know, mm. but like whatever. <laughs> and uh, but anyways, back to mm. like more recently. Um, so I was speaking with my family about like, okay, so like, what are my options now? Mm. How am I going to like live my life? I can't go back there. And then they were just like, well, then go back to school Mm. like go re-educate yourself and all that sort of stuff so i went online to see like what kind of english degree programs they have 
mm. in in Finland and I found, you know, there's business and IT and nursing and all this sort of stuff. And I already yeah. had a background in healthcare. And I thought, well, you know, I do want to work in healthcare. So why don't I just like deepen my studies and go study nursing? Um, because I do envision myself working in, in that field one way or another mm. in the future. So I applied to Metropolitan University of Applied Science to the mm. nursing uh to the nursing faculty and and luckily like you they accepted me and i went there and everything went like so smoothly you know mm. i went there did the application exams got accepted like mm. straight off the bat i know a lot of people redo exams like two three times before they get accepted in mm. and basically once i well even before i was into that process with my girlfriend i basically said like well you know uh i'm gonna move to helsinki <laughs> yeah either come with me or you don't mm. and luckily she decided that she would come with me and she mm. also applied to school and same thing for her everything went super smoothly she got it to exactly the degree she wanted to to uh get into so in 2000 and when was it 2017 we moved to yeah mm. we moved to to uh helsinki been living here and having good life and you know now i've been studying uh nursing and had really great experience i find it really interesting been working in a lot of different hospitals and stuff mm. like that learning a lot and uh then last year we had a and this is now like where everything's i completely changed my perspective with what i'm studying and how i sort of envision myself in the future um, we had one class which was management and entrepreneurship mm. Uh, and of course, as, as someone who's studying nursing, you're a little bit like, okay, how is this? Okay, I understand the management part, but like entrepreneurship, don't really get it. Uh, and we went there and it was a pretty short course, but uh, we went there and the teacher had an assignment for us, which was like, okay, you need to think of like an innovation startup. or a yeah. startup business. Like, of mm -hmm. course, you don't need to start it, but just like get those like juices flowing mm -hmm. to start thinking in an innovative way about how we mm -hmm. can solve or improve some of the things yeah some in, challenges you know, yeah. create a market almost like, yeah. yeah and it was a group assignment so i did that with some of my like classmates and i really enjoyed it mm. and then i like just emailed the teacher and i was like hey like i really dig this and mm. i just got another idea like just in my spare time so i'm gonna do this assignment twice mm. and he was like cool like mm. go ahead And I bet you got five out of five yeah, from the course. Yeah, <laughs> of course. The, the and, teacher is like, okay, what's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. And uh, basically, um, he gave us sort of like a carrot. And he was like, this assignment that you're doing, you can send in. The assignment is the same uh, structure as an application mm. to get into this uh, accelerator program called Cambridge Venture Camp. Okay. It's organized by Laura Entrepreneurship Society. Mm. And he was like, uh, you can send your assignment basically straight to them word for word. Mm. That's the application. And if you get in, you get free flights to Cambridge. You go there, learn about the startup scene in, in Helsinki wow. and Finland and all this sort of stuff. And I was just like, all right, like challenge accepted. So mm. I, I sent my uh, business plan to them and luckily got in. And then we basically spent one week in Helsinki learning about the startup scene here, all the different startup hubs and, and all that sort of stuff learning about pitching, uh, visual sort of parts of like, mm. you know, your PowerPoint when you're pitching and, and learning, you know, meeting different sort of inspirational people in the scene and stuff mm. like that. And then we went to Cambridge to meet like investors and do some like business development stuff and mm. all that sort of thing. So like that was like super cool. And, you know, with my uh, business plan, I should probably say like what my business plan is because yeah. we've been speaking a lot about it. So d did you like, come up with your business plan through um through this assi assignment yeah basically yeah. so basically it's it's quite an easy concept uh and it, it's not like a completely new thing but it is something that is lacking in uh finland and a lot of countries that have rural areas mm. so basically uh It's a healthcare providing service for people with kidney disease. Okay. So people who have kidney disease need to go through a treatment called, there's a few different kinds of options for treatment, but the most used one is called hemodialysis. Okay. And basically what that is, is it's a machine mm. and it takes your blood 
filters and cleans your blood and then puts it back into mm. your body. Some people have it so hard in life, man. Yeah. So, mm. you know, when your kidneys stop working, you have basically three options. You go through treatment, you get a kidney transplant, and we all know there's a huge line for that. Mm. Or then the third option is you die. And it, it doesn't even work all the time, the no. transplant. Even if you get one, you, yeah. might, you have to be luck, lucky and then... If the kidney doesn't, if the body doesn't like kind yeah, of like sync it, with it yeah. and rejects yeah. it. It's, so it's, it's really, really complicated. So basically. So if you're having a hard day, just remember that <laughs> you have two kidneys and you can buy two iPhones with them. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> and um, basically these people need to go get treatments three or four times a week mm. and it lasts four hours. So they're dedicating 12 to 16 hours a week to being strapped up to this machine to stay alive. And imagine like how how they really feel. Like this yeah. is just the things that we can see that, okay, yeah. he has to be in this machine for four hours in this yeah. amount of time. But how does it feel that your blood goes and comes back? Exactly. I bet it's not like having yeah. a chocolate or something. Well, basically, it's, it's like, you know, they're they're trapped. Yeah. They're trapped because they have to dedicate so much time to sort of dealing with this illness. Mm. So basically what my, my business does is it's making this service more accessible for these people because some people need to travel an hour, mm. an hour and a half, two hours to the closest hospital or clinic that has these services, right? Mm. So it's four hours plus, let's say one hour there plus an other hour back. And it is a very like exhausting procedure. Of so course. you need to take another two hours of break. So that's an entire day. Mm. That's like half of your life dedicated to treatment. Mm. So basically, easy concept. You take the hemodialysis machine and you build a either a uh, bus clinic, mm. right? Really simple. Or then you have like an ambulance vehicle with one machine in it. Mm. So it's basically to do with customizing vehicles that can then host these uh, patients and these machines to get the treatment inside. Mm. And it's beneficial for people who are living in rural areas. Mm. People in central or northern Finland might mm. travel, like I said, one hour, one and a half hours. Just to get just to, to get see the, the doctor. Three or four times a week. Mm. So why can't we just take those machines closer to them so it provides more freedom in their life mm. to sort of, um, so they can sort of focus more on things that they want to do mm. rather than traveling and treatment. Mm. And other people who would benefit from this would be the elderly who are living in supported care who mm. require this treatment. The process to get them to the hospital or the closest clinic is really mm. complicated. From the bed, wheelchair, take them outside into the taxi. The taxi takes them in there, straps it up. You get the gist. Mm. Go there, get the treatment block, go back. So why can't we just take like an ambulance vehicle, take it to the front of the uh, like retirement home, mm. uh, wheel them into the vehicle, we get the treatment there. Mm. You know, that's, it's pretty basic concept. Mm. Um, and people have been really interested in this. Mm. Uh, and it's, I think part of that reason is because there's a lot of pain points mm. to this. And it's just sort of like being sympathetic to their, Uh, condition and the illness that they're sort of mm. facing so that's basically the business in a in a nutshell mm. so you came up with this in in your second like assignment yeah you really did that assignment and you came up with this concept so what happened after that so we you, you haven't yeah. told me how how did we get into the Kotka ship started. Oh, right. So, yeah. yeah. So I went to Cambridge and uh, they had a pitching competition in the end. I was in the top three. Yeah. I think I was second place mm. yeah, or something. But anyways, top three. Mm. Uh, and then also they promised that they would provide us tickets to ship that start a festival mm. and then also shift start a festival and potentially go to Slush as well. Mm. So basically, yeah, uh, We went to, with my business idea, you know, fix it up a little bit and all this sort of stuff. So then I was basically representing Laura ES at Ship Festival mm. as one of their like startups mm. and went there, pitched against 50 other mm. like startups who are far, far more like developed than me because mine's just an idea mm. and uh, somehow ended up in the top 10 and yeah. Great. It was really a great time and it was good fun. What happened there. like after that? What happened after Sheep Startup Festival? I, yeah. I came back 
I started to, I got the juice and the yeah. grind from them. I was like, yeah. hey, I need to do more. Mm. You know, it it legitimized my uh, actions or mm-hmm. my hobbies or whatever, like the yeah. kind of vision because someone actually recognized me to be a doer and yeah. asked me to come there and mm. do a service for them. I didn't get paid, mm. but, you know, like I said, I got so much out of it. Yeah. The payment would just create more pressures on me you know like oh man i gotta perform well i mean of course i further took steps to develop the Mm. business idea and concept Uh, i've been speaking to lawyers patenting agents Mm. i've been trying to find a team member actively still looking for team members because i this needs a pretty strong team with lots of expertise Mm. Uh, you know, further developing the business idea, doing paperwork and, and that sort of thing. Mm. But I mean, even through that, like like you said, like when people see that you're kind of a doer, all these other sort of opportunities arise from just putting yourself out there. Yeah. And uh, I think that's one of the most crucial things that I've been doing in the last year, which has sort of ch- changed sort of my my like sort of path. Mm. And that's just like, put yourself out there and if something scares you a little bit, like, then do it, you know? Mm. So now I've been, you know... I was so scared and I just want to say, before I went to mm. Ship Starter Festival, I was driving to that place and I was like, hey, maybe I should just call them I'm sick and not, yeah, yeah. And not show up. <laughs> like, seriously, it was so bad. But every time I went there, I just felt better and better. Yeah. And I'm so happy that I did that because, you know, I have so much, so many memories of that place. Yeah, definitely. And I think the thing, like, I, like, we'd agreed on is, like, if it scares you a little bit, then you're, like, kind of in the right place. And, you know, now I'm, like, you know, again, like, with volunteering, like, doing things, like, for free or whatever, you know, I've been able to go to, like, seminars and, like, big seminars with, like, health care mm. in like like the big names in healthcare in in the nordic countries like being sitting next to these people as a student who are making the decisions you mm. know like i've been in seminars with with them uh and was you know, like conferences mm. been able to have a chance to sort of also be a host for a lot of different sort of like uh like different events events and, and this sort of thing so like you mentioned before like and I think also a lot of other people have noticed, like from my pitches, like I have this sort of the way that I speak in like pu- my public speaking. The I way you express yourself. Yeah, I don't know what exactly it is I do, but it, of course, when I'm up there, I'm like nervous. Mm. Like you get that sort of like deep mm. feeling in your chest. But there's something that I'm doing that people like. Yeah. Like, but I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I don't, I haven't watched any of my pitching videos because yeah. like, I can't stand watching myself on video. Tell me about it. Like <laughs> me making these videos, you know, yeah. I, I just watch it a couple of times and I'll put it there and just don't watch it again. Yeah. It's healthy. For, it's good for your mental health, man. Yeah, telling definitely. You. It's so easy to like <laughs> zoom up on your face, but the fuck is that some shit in my mm. teeth or something? And exactly. I'll just delete the whole Pe- thing. People don't know these things. Yeah. you know in you that you don't yeah. the way you look at yourself is not the way i'm going to look at you or any yeah other one, definitely so. and people are more concerned about what other people are thinking about themselves yeah. than what they're actually thinking about other people mm. so that's yeah that's one thing you know i would say like just have a good common sense and and you know like just see how the people are reacting to you and, and how, what you speak you know, that's mm. from my experience you know like a lot of that in a communication is like how how the dance goes, you know, yeah. like give and take or sparring. You you've been doing Brazilian jiu jitsu, so a lot of yeah. that is just react reacting to the situation, and yeah. you can't ever create that situation pitch perfect. Yeah, one of the things that I like a recent idea. It's not very recent, but. I think the thing is the contrast. We we were talking about the contrast in mm. many things. Like when you're in the army and then you come to the normal life and you see the contrast. Yeah. A lot of the, th- the ratio or, or almost like, you know, appreciation comes from when you shift from contrast, you know, like, oh, wow, this is how things are. Yeah. So 
the contrast with communication, especially nowadays with the youngsters. Mm-hmm. I don't want to sound like a grumpy old, you know, uncle or something. Yeah. But like I thought our generation was awkward and we were not talking and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But this generation, the future generation is the communication has changed. People yeah. are more in front of the screen and it does affect like people almost don't know how to like improv they don't know how yeah. to like communicate yeah. or you know like how to express themselves mm-hmm. clearly and people like us who have multiple cultures or we've been in a society where we know that we are slightly different you know whether it's finland or australia to you where you have like two places and they're completely different yeah. in different ways you have to communicate much harder would you say Yeah. You understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah. P- things don't make sense to you. Mm-hmm. Like I thought, I genuinely thought I was an idiot when I was like <laughs> growing up as a kid. Yeah, because everyone too. was like reading so fast and yeah, you know yeah. like learning much. Like I had to always like ask, and it's like you are bothering everyone. Like, hey, mm. I don't understand this word. Hey, I don't understand this word. Yeah, yeah. So and and the teacher can't give you the attention that you need because yeah. you need you have a special need because you mm. don't even understand the basic words the same way that the native Finns do, who yeah. only hears one language at the time. Mm. So you know, I felt like I'm stupid or something. You yeah, know? yeah. But the flip side of that is like you you get bored because you don't understand and you have to kind of make sense. You have to kind of grind yourself through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can make you or break you, right? Yeah, definitely. So, um, yeah, with the communication skills, I would say that's one of the disadvantage for us when we were growing up. Mm. Uh, at least I can speak for myself, but it turned out to be a positive for me. Yeah, def- definitely as well, yeah. I had a similar experience as well when, like, I moved away from Finland when I like I was born here. Moved away when I was six, and like, because uh, in Finland you start school one year older than in the rest of the world. So yeah. people start school here when they're seven, seven, yeah. And in the rest of the world, they start school when they're six. Yeah. And I went to you know, uh, mm. well, it was an international school in Singapore, mm. and I hadn't had been in the first grade yet, but the. I don't remember if it was the principal or well, one of the staff there basically said, "Nah, it's it's better that Ben is with pe- like the kids that is his own age." Mm. So I actually skipped the first grade and went straight to the second grade, and that was sort of like the first domino that sort of like stacked onto sort of my entire schooling experience being a little bit of a struggle. Mm. Um, I was always a little bit like behind, and of course you go through that rebellious teenage like phase, phase and you're like, "Yeah, fuck this," but like mm. you know. And you think about it, and it makes sense because, like, I wasn't in the classroom learning my. I never was in the classroom learning my ABCs mm, and mm. what sort of sounds each letter make. It was mm. just from like, okay, I had a little bit of tu- English tutoring when I was living here growing up, mm. but then I remember, I still remember sitting <laughs> in the second grade, and you know there was some activity to like write a short story, <laughs> and <laughs> I had never like really written Anything. before yeah and i didn't understand the concept of spaces mm. so i just put a line between the words, the red words. yeah and and <laughs> i mean it's funny like my mom still has uh some of my notebooks from mm. like that time and it's just really funny yeah like yeah. Re- reading through and you know you like you read it the way that it's written and yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. like the grammar like and... like finish yeah. finish is r- written the way it's pronounced yeah, so it's... that's very confusing as well yeah like i don't know how to write english properly and i don't yeah. know how Neither to write finish properly or bengali or arabic yeah. so my struggle was like my parents they speak bengali at home mm. and they really wanted me to learn how to read and write bengali so mm. they they have completely different alphabets it's more like sanskrit Right, close to Indian, so it's like a dialect from Sanskrit. Mm-hmm. Um, then we're Muslims, so you know we read the Quran in Arabic. Yeah. So I had to learn the Arabic alphabets, yeah. and then the Finnish. Right. So you know, you're like, you know, now that I think about, it, that's like a bit overwhelming. Mm. Um, maybe it could have been done in a different way, but I'm messed up still. Till to this day, I yeah, yeah. like I might write something that is completely r- wrongly written, but 
then again you know like and i used to feel very insecure about that i was yeah. like oh man i'm not sure like but you know how i deal with that i was like hey i know something that other people don't know how to do it yeah. and i'm good at those stuff so yeah. it's fine to suck at something mm, you know and definitely. i don't really care if yeah. you get the message you get the message yeah, yeah. and if you judge me because of that to be a bad person then yeah. you know hey maybe we shouldn't work anyways mm. you yeah, know like yeah, yeah. <laughs> And one strategy, but almost, obviously it's really embarrassing when you send like you know like and typos, emails and typos and everything. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. yeah. My my problem though is like with with the phone, my thumbs are clumsy and like I sort of like rush my typing. Yeah. So like before I like look at what I've written, I'll just click enter. You know, because yeah. it's such a it comes so naturally. Yeah. Uh, so like uh, like sometimes, you know, I'll write something like an entire paragraph, mm. trying to like make a point or like ask something. And then I sort of like put my phone away. Then I open the thing again and I look at it and it's just gibberish. And I'll just be like, okay, sorry. Um, like, let me try again. And then like type it like a little bit more carefully. Yeah. And I'm not really sure whether my friends have got used to that and they don't even correct me anymore. Yeah. yeah just yeah. get it that I'm like retard or something, <laughs> you know, so it's, it's fine. But, you know, hey, they still love me. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess it's not that but bad. To, just uh, <laughs> another point like to do with... Uh, you were saying like to get if you don't understand something or or you need help with something i've always found and this is a strategy that i've been doing a lot mm. is actually people are flattered when you ask them for help when you sort of come with a sort of a humbleness to them saying like hey like i don't really understand this or i don't know what i need to do mm. like i know that you understand how this works mm. like do you think you could like help me a little bit people are always a little bit you know, like, yeah, yeah, of course I'll come and help you. And, you know, it's, 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 that's how I often deal with things where, where I need like a little bit of help or something. That's a really good point that it's not just asking the help. It's how you ask the help. Yeah. And also like personally, if someone asks me in the, in the workplace, like how to do certain things, I'm more than hel- uh, like more than happy to help. It's just, if I have other things to do and mm-hmm. I have to do this, then I feel slightly intimidated, like slightly annoyed but it's not to the person. It's just that I have other things to do. Yeah. But yeah. I still try to help and, mm. you know, try to be that person because I'm, I'm the other guy who asks all the time. Yeah. And the thing is, never give up on asking. Yeah. The moment you stop asking is the moment you stop learning. Yeah. Because if you don't ask, you don't learn. And mm. then, you you know, I see a lot of old people in my workplace and like uh, customers and I need to help them with their IT stuff. Mm. And I see like sometimes they feel very, especially males, they feel like almost like their ego hurt, like they yeah. need to ask. And and I just hope that I don't become that person because mm. we all have egos and they, it's it's a weird manly thing that you need to know about gadgets. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. So, you know, sometimes they might be like, hey, I've been doing this so, so many times. And it's like, hey, have you tried to reset the phone? Because you need to reset every now and then, you yeah. know, laptops, phones and all this stuff. Mm. And they're like, yeah, 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 I've done it. And then I do it and it works perfectly. Yeah, yeah. And they feel very embarrassed. And I say like, hey, it's, it's okay. You know, yeah, yeah. just remember to do that. Like, I'm not judging you. It's fine. You know, mm. it happens. It happens to us as well. And try to make them feel better, but I don't know how much better they feel. Yeah. A foreigner guy, you know, they probably fought for the fi- for for the freedom of this country, mm-hmm. and then like this black guy come and <laughs> help them with the high teas. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, so far, I haven't felt any like racism. It's fine, mm. but I wanted to ask you about nursing. You okay. know, uh, how many guys do you have in your <laughs> like? Uh, is, is it like? A, like the idea that I have is like most, you know, it's very female dominated yeah, uh, area. Yeah, 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 definitely. Is that the reason you got into? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I just had a girlfriend. Uh, okay, I see. <laughs> when, when I started nursing, but the the um, yeah, nursing. Yeah, it's 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 a uh, still is. It's becoming more popular slowly amongst males, and mm. I've even seen over the last three years that I'm studying that. Uh, every year in the English degree program, more and more men have been enrolling into mm. the nursing course. Because when I started, there was four guys and 26 women. And the second year, there was like five or six guys. Mm. And then the most recent, there's, you know, it's becoming more and more like half and half. Wow. 
and uh, it's that's only a good thing, mm. I think. Uh, and we need equal representation. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but it's definitely like a, it's nursing is a it's a really important part of society because yeah. they're the ones who are covered in spit, blood, shit, pit, like piss, you know, and the ones who are like first handedly taking care of our family members. Mm. But it's so easy to forget about what they're doing, especially when they're in this sort of hospital setting. Because when people think about hospitals, the first thing that comes into mind is doctor. Mm. And of course, doctors are playing a really important role in that sort of ecosystem. But nurses are the ones who are actually the ones doing the doing hard the labor. Hard labor. Mm. And um, yeah, it's 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 a tough gig, but it's a really broad uh, industry. Mm. You know, you can be working in a ward, special like a general ward, or mm. then you could work in a ward that's specializing in some sort of illness mm. or certain like organ or part of the body, or then you could be working in the operation room, mm. doing like pain management, working with like some pretty heavy drugs, mm. you know. Or then you could be like an instrument nurse being the surgeon's assistant. Or then you could be someone who's, you know, specializing in a certain technology, mm. you know, certain machine that's sort of doing a certain procedure for, for patients. So it's very nursing in a clinical setting mm. is already very broad. Mm. But, uh, you know, studying nursing also going back to what I was saying before, like, what has broadened my perspective is that when you're studying nursing, mm. you don't necessarily are restricted to working in a clinical or hospital setting. So you don't necessarily like have to be a nurse. Mm. So if you're studying nursing and once you graduate, I would like to see more people with an attitude that like, I'm not only a nurse, but I'm actually a healthcare professional. Exactly, And this is, and I, I think if schools and, you know, faculties can start sort of promoting this idea, it'll sort of broaden the spectrum of what I can actually do with this degree. Mm. So I've now been with, uh, so I've been working now with a group of people mm. To launch a new society in our university, it's called Metropolitan Entrepreneurship Society, mm. and basically we started that about three months ago, mm. and we had our launching party just last Thursday. Mm. It's really really successful, and I'm basically working as a community developer there, mm. and I'm going to be working as the ambassador in the healthcare fields. Mm. So basically, I'll be sort of assisting all the people in the healthcare fields with innovations or businesses that they want to start. But the thing is that the problem in universities at the moment is that like you kind of get stuck in that bubble mm. of, okay, I'm studying healthcare. So I'm only with my class and learning about this thing. But if someone ever has a good idea or if they sort of have an innovation that they want to work on, you can't accomplish those things if you're stuck in that bubble. Because if I have like a new technology mm. that I want to develop, a nurse can't build me something. Mm. I need to go to the engineering faculty mm. and speak to them, pitch my idea, and then they can take their profession, put them together to actually like build a product. Yeah, cross-platform would... almost like. Basically. And that's basically what we're trying to accomplish in Metropolia Entrepreneurship mm. Society. Because that's where the innovation is. Yeah, Cause... exactly. Mm. We're trying to build this uh, more innovative and entrepreneurial culture in, in the in the in the school by uh, div uh, by um, bringing like minded people together. Where they from different fields. From different fields. So, what are the fields that you have? So, you have the healthcare. So, there is healthcare. Then there is engineering. Mm. Then there is business, mm. and then there's IT. I mean, that's the very broadest sort of umbrellas that yeah. there are. But then, you know, like business, there's like business logistics or management, marketing. Oh, sorry. And then, of course, there's uh, the cultural field. Yeah. I used to be in the same university and I used to be in the IT department. But okay. I took a lot of the business uh, classes, you yeah. know, uh, about logistics and, uh, you know, managing projects and whatnot. 
part of the reason was because I was running an NGO, uh, youth NGO. So okay. I could see like, okay, here are some theories and some tools and I could actually yeah. impl- you know, implement them yeah. in something. And it was, um, yeah, I, I found it very like, um, yeah. I found my interest to lean towards the yeah. businesses. But that's good that you did that because a lot of people aren't doing that. Yeah. And it's basically, we want to promote that sort of culture mm-hmm. going on. And it's also just to be able to, because a lot of student associations, they're very focused on parties. Mm-hmm. And of course that's good, you know, <laughs> like. You need to have downtime or exactly. whatever. Yeah. But we want to sort of have a similar thing, but in a more sort of professional setting. Of course, we're going to have fun and all that sort of mm-hmm. stuff. But it's it's about sort of developing the connections to make certain business ideas or innovations possible in the future by sort of combining different skills that mm. students have. And, and it's it's about the quality time because quality time doesn't necessarily mean that you need to be drunk, right? Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, like, like to you, the people like you who like to work hard and exercise their mind almost mm. like different possibilities you you would find more out of this kind of sessions than just you know just drinking and like yeah. oh, would that be a good idea doing something dumb yeah. i'm not saying that everyone who drinks does dumb things yeah. but i'm saying like like you said it you know mm. it should be focusing on how these students can you know make most out of their university yeah. studies yeah you know definitely and and one thing one of my the guys the guy who's sort of the visionary of we because there has been a metropolitan entrepreneurship society it went down so the the visionary who sort of um got us all together mm. to make make this to Thing relaunch happen. it basically yeah. uh he has put this in a very like good perspective which i i really like his sort of like metaphor or mm. whatever how he sort of put it and he said you know, in like in all these different industries, mm. you know, there is, if you, if you consider that an industry is like a machine mm. and then there's the workers, the casual workers, the people who are grinding and stuff like mm. that. Uh, and there's the gears. Mm. Do you want to be a gear that is part of the machine or do you want to be the one who's actually designing that machine? Both people are, or like, you know, be the team that's designing the machine both aspects are very crucial because mm. i mean without the engineer or the one who's designing the machine there is no machine and without no, no machine there is nothing to be sort of worked on or fixed mm. so it's important for people to sort of like re- self-reflect and think like okay who do i want to be do i want to be the one who's just like grinding there and ha- doing my role to make this thing smooth float mm. uh, like works like smoothly or do I want to be the one who sort of thinks like, okay, I see a little bit of a problem here. So let's replace that with this or like, let's add some oils there. So it's like, this is like working a little bit better. Mm-hmm. So like both, both are very important. Yeah. Both, both have very important role in this ecosystem. And I think we can both say that we belong into that second category that, Hey, this works. <laughs> But mm. it needs some fixing. Like we ran out of the camera material. So I need some fixing with that. Sorry about that, guys. We'll we'll fix it in the next clip. So yeah, <laughs> this is a good example for this. <laughs> and we are back. Sorry guys about the technical issue that we had. You know, in life nothing goes perfectly, but yeah. then you have to recalibrate it. You yeah. Know? And that's that's just uh, how it is. But hey, we were talking about the Entrepreneur Society and yeah. that you guys do other things and more mm-hmm. productive things than just, you know, having awesome parties, which you guys also do. Mm. Um, how, how would you describe, because when I was in the university and I was in the Metropolitan University mm. uh, and I didn't get myself involved to this stuff yeah. because it was mostly about drinking and having a drinking party and, you know. Yeah. Hey, let's have a party and everyone dresses like this. And let's yeah. have a party and, uh, you know, and uh, personally, I don't drink. So I didn't find like there was anything that I could yeah. get out of it. And also I felt like we had like these assemb- assemblies, like everyone had to come and listen to these uh, institutions. Mm. And 
institutions or unions almost like yeah. engineering unions or healthcare unions and, and blah 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 which were very informative but I wish they could you know I wish they could do something like that you know like yeah. let's come together have some nice food and you know sit down get to know each other and get yeah. to know the worries of different faculties you know yeah. or, or the concerns or, or where there needs to be an improvement and then that's how you find different innovations yeah so um does all uh metropolia metropolia es mm -hmm. entrepreneur society uh what's the goal for this year is this the first year that they're yeah so this is basically the first year and we like officially launched just uh two days ago mm. and basically we have created a alliance with laura es and hagahele es known as xes mm. And we're going to work in a sort of partnership to mm. sort of be able to have a larger reach to students. And not only students, but this is also welcome for people from outside. Mm. They don't have to be part of this, uh, the um, uh, educational, like they don't have to be students, basically. Yeah. So anyone is welcome to come and join in our activities and, and all this sort of stuff, because our, our whole goal is to sort of connect students or people with companies mm. or employment opportunities innovation projects all this sort of stuff i'm really interested and i'm yeah. just thinking that does metropolis still have like the media thing because I'm, I'm interesting in photo shoots and stuff like that do like, you have like to study n uh, not to study but to get to know the guys who are studying the media so i yeah. can learn from them i hate to be in the classroom you know, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm that kind of a guy that i like to listen okay this yeah. is how you do it someone shows it to me and yeah but anyway to hang out with them and to know about the industry yeah, more yeah. well for example like you know if we're having uh, an event and we know that there's going to be some media people there then mm -hmm. like i was like i was yeah you message know, and you're man. welcome to come to our event or anything like that and yeah, then you can sure. sort of learn more or if you have a project that you're interested in doing you can mm -hmm. always like bring those students on board and stuff like yeah, that yeah. you know like this this is kind of like what we're trying to yeah, trying to do definitely yeah and uh but basically the main goal for this this uh year, year is to have a strong network network but like have a sort of just develop mm -hmm. we need to sort of first of all let the ecosystem know that we exist mm. start helping students and sort of like connecting them and pointing them in the right direction and sort of develop a um like following mm. so we need to sort of have actives mm. and we need to sort of have you know a good solid vision of what we want to do in the next sort of three years mm. and how and also understand what is our place when we're sort of working in collaboration with laura es and xes <clears throat> so you know, we've been just sort of casually chatting about the potential things that we can do. And there yeah. are some really awesome ideas that we're, we're thinking about doing. Um, big projects that would sort of bring a little bit more attention to universities of applied sciences. Because, mm. you know, uh, we have such great facilities in our universities and mm. we have such great knowledge coming from these facilities mm. but why is all the attention always going mm. to like health scheme? not saying like there's anything wrong with it mm. but like the, all the attention is always like oh look at all this great stuff coming from like health university or all the university but yeah. the thing is why can't universities of applied sciences be doing like the same thing as well yeah and i've been with the Alta Entrepreneur Society, not in the top level, but mm. just as a volunteer, because my brother studies in Alta yeah. Chemical Sciences and my cousin, a couple of my cousins as well. So I've been volunteer from there. And it's, you know, it's awesome. And I've been, it was, it was really refreshing to be with the young people who are active. And like you said, why don't we have in like, uh, applied science universities the same kind of you know culture mm, yeah. the same kind of vibe yeah. but i think it's like to do with again because i'm working as a community developer mm. it's sort of being able to take all the teachers lectures together as well mm. and saying like hey this is our vision like please be part of our vision mm. and that'll then sort of like plant a seed in their mind mm. and if you know maybe they have a student who has like a good idea or in innovation mm. well then they come to us and say like hey i have this great student who has this great idea 
maybe you can sort of like help them move forwards with this? Like, or do you know people that they can connect with for, to sort of like further develop this? Yeah. So in, in that sort of, in that sort of way, like the, that's kind of what we want to be able to do this, this, this year. Uh, I wish I would have this kind of yeah. thing happening when I was there, but Hey, I'm, I'm really happy and proud for you guys. Yeah, and thanks. And if there's anything I can do for you guys, you know, let me know. Definitely. Like what what they call it. Uh, the, um, so if a student graduates from institution, mm. there's a word for that. Uh, Al- alumni. Alu- alumni? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So as a whatever that word is, mm. you know, um, loyal to you guys. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, but hey, um, we were talking about this nursing thing, right? Yeah. And a couple of days, like a week ago, I was talking to my friend and, mm. and we were discussing some of the political issues. We we yeah. have a lot of political discussions. It's not like we are in the politics, but we like to talk about it. Yeah. Because then you don't have to take any responsibility when you're not in there. Yeah. But anyway, so we were talking about this nursing crisis that Finland is facing. Yeah. Uh, first question, like, okay, let me explain the way I understood. So we are having some... Uh, crises or lack of workers nurses mm-hmm. yeah. in especially in elderly care yeah i don't know about the other fields mm-hmm. and also i w- wanted to ask that is this just this phenomenon just in finland or is it worldwide or europe wide or mm-hmm. us wide you know explain yeah. elaborate because you're in the field maybe you know a bit yeah. more than i do about i'm this. not sure about worldwide mm. but at least i know that there are staff shortages in a lot of countries regarding nursing so like for example in finland and also in australia the the, the problem is that the sort of um the uh interest in the field is declining because nurses aren't being sort of given the respect in society that I think that they deserve. And in and the workload is really hard. So yeah. if you don't even get the respect, then yeah, why bother? So basically what's going on in Finland at the moment is like, yeah, there's a sh- shortage of nurses. Um, and especially, like you said, in geriatric and the elderly care. And that's a problem because our population is growing. Mm. So who's going to look after these people? Mm. Now... A lot of people are losing incentive and interest to start nursing in the first place because it's not paying well. Mm. Uh, you know, like there's that lack of respect mm. and there needs to be a sort of cultural shift, you know, and a sort of a mindset needs to be changed about this. And it starts with basically something as simple as raising salaries mm. <laughs> because at the moment, Finnish nurses are not getting paid enough mm. so they can go to sweden and get they paid double mm. or they can go to norway and get paid or triple. dubai where they can get really exactly. well and me for example why would i stay here and get paid so little when i can get paid double like next door mm. right mm. and how do we sort of portray this message to the politicians mm. and say like hey Yeah, there's a shortage of nurses and you need to understand that, you know, when you're old and retired, there's not going to be the quality and the amount of care that you need. Mm. So these people are kind of like biting themselves in the asses Mm. because they're the ones who are going to be in the sort of old care wards Mm. and not getting the treatment that they need. Mm. So there is a shortage and nurses as well are being, and because of that, nurses are being overworked Mm. and you know burnt out and people are burning out they're leaving the like sort of industry like altogether it's pretty it's it's not looking good (laughs) Mm. (laughs) yeah Mm. and a burnout is like here's the thing yeah you you can overwork someone for a week Mm. let's say a month Let's say yeah. like six months. Yeah. But there will come a stop to it. Yeah. And once the stop comes, then you have to recruit a new guy. Yeah. Like who is winning in the end of the day? Nobody's yeah. winning. Mm-hmm. The guy who's in the guy who's burnt out doesn't like that. He's not feeling well. Yeah. The empl- uh, the employer he's not feeling well because he has to like 
put extra resources to yeah. get a new, you know, recruit, yeah. teach the recruit, you know, about, even if mm-hmm. the recruit knows about nursing, but they need to like learn the house rules. You yeah. know, this is how we yeah. do things. Yeah. This, these are our routines. Yeah. And, and, and the problem <clears throat> is as well at the moment, because it starts sort of at the beginning. Yeah. And basically one thing, and I've been also sort of, I've gathered a bunch of students and sort of said like, hey, let's mm. sort of start making noise about this. Like, let's start a movement about this issue mm. is that uh, healthcare uh, students are the only ones who don't get paid for internships. Mm. And in fact, the schools are paying hospitals to have the students there. Mm. So I'm, for example, I'm going to a uh, internship starting on Monday mm. and I won't have the opportunity to work during my spare time because I'm working already 40 mm. hours a week mm. and I'll be in a different city because there's a lack of sort of placements. Mm. So it's going to be really hard for me to be working on the weekends to sort of be able to pay my bills and my groceries and all that sort of stuff. So by the end of my internship, I've burnt holes in my pockets. Mm. Whereas my colleague student who's studying business is getting paid a thousand euros a month mm. to go work in a company. Mm. So the the issue here is not that they're getting paid. And well so the issue is not that like we're not getting paid. The issue is that they're getting paid, but we're not. Mm. The hospitals are getting paid and the money's going to you know yeah and and the thing is like hey like can you just pay for my food can Mm. you just pay for my transport so i can get Mm. there Mm. can i get like you know five bucks a day spending Mm. money we're not it's not it's not much that Mm. like we sort of need i mean finland already has a really good support sort of services Mm. but the thing is why should i have to burn throughout all my savings, everything that I've been working for, like mm. in the last six months that I've been collecting, mm. for it to all be burnt away in five or six weeks. Mm. And then, you know, people working in the cultural field or business or engineering are getting paid. Mm. So mm. I think it's just to do with fairness, mm. you know. How do you think, like, so you started this movement or... It's where... just, yeah, we've just had one meeting and yeah. we've sort of just well, gathered people who are interested in sort of moving forwards with it yeah but it's really important cause and you know like i said throughout the whole thing that if there is anything i can help you with that you know like a material to raise awareness or yeah for sure you know i think uh it's a real issue that we need to face and Mm -hmm. it's funny that we human beings one of the thing that makes us human is that we can conceptualize the future yeah in the past and we can learn from the past and we can learn from other people's past and you know mm. uh work use it in a in our future but somehow we're you know acting like animals mm. that we just live at the moment and we don't yeah. think about the future like yeah. hey i'm gonna probably be in that place or mm. you know have to use services by the nurse yeah uh throughout my life because mm. you know you don't get doctors right away you get yeah. nurse first exactly. and then this nurse most probably is going to do like big chunk of the whole thing doctors have like they do very important things i'm not like downplaying on doctors but what i'm saying is like you know if you don't have nurses then the doctors would have to do the things yeah. that the nurses yeah, are exactly. doing and, and they don't have time to be with as many patients that they need exactly to be, and doctors help. hours cost more than nurses for yeah. certain reasons and yeah it's 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 a mm. thing that we need to solve yeah and but you, yeah so basically what i was saying like it starts from the beginning and it starts with the education so it's been this for this now for so long mm. and then we go into an industry where we're already being underpaid mm. and also because nurses need to swear an oath mm they're not allowed to protest or go on strike because if people go on strike mm. or protest, people die. Mm. So there's this really, there's this huge sort of... So you're being cornered issue. from here and there. Like yeah. Checkmate, you can't like move. And, you're like, and, okay. <laughs> and the thing is because, I mean, inherently people study nursing because they want to help people. Yeah, right? of course. It's a calling. Yeah, it is, it, is, it is kind of a calling. But And the thing is like, of course we want to help people but the thing is, like, how can I help people if I can't even, like, support my family? 
how can I help people when I need help myself? Exactly. <laughs> you know? And I'm being overworked and burning out. Yeah. So the thing is that um, at any one time, from what I've understood, in Helsinki Healthcare District, there's at least 2,000 nurses working in hospitals. Mm. Or I think it was nationwide or something like that. Mm. It's illegal for nurses to go on strike, but there's nothing saying that it's illegal for students to go on strike. And you can think if you take 2,000 students away from the hospitals in one day, that's going to like make a pretty huge impact. We're like planning a evil yeah, no. plan here. <laughs> but what I'm saying is like we hold so much power. Mm. Like I said, if we don't work, people die. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's why we can't go on strike because yeah. inherently we want to help these people. This needs to be addressed in the correct form. Exactly. Yeah. And sometimes the... You know, the only way you get hurt is when you really do something yeah. radical. Yeah. And, you know, we want to find a way where we can sort of portray this message mm. to say, like, it stops now. Mm. You need to not only start supporting our students, but you need to support our, like, brothers and sisters who are working in the ward, mm. who are not being sort of given their common decency and respect that they should be getting. Mm. Because at the end of the day... It's the people and society who's going to suffer in the end. Mm. And there is a many kind, like there is a lot of different ways to support the nurses. It can be financially. Mm. It can be like create more workshops and different kind of activities yeah. where they can relieve their stresses and they feel like they're ready for the next day. You know, whatever the solution is. But yeah. the thing is, this needs to be tackled we can't yeah. just be quite shh, you know yeah, shush exactly. about it and it's it's been going on uh, on for too long but you know finland is a, is a country where they want to support everybody yeah. and of course the issue here is that there probably well is a lack of money so yeah. rather than being able to sort of just put money somewhere it means like they have to take money from somewhere else and then put it somewhere there so and also what i've been noticing in finland is like there's being this You know, there's always this mm. like global sort of uh, news about Finland. You mm. know, we just have a prime minister, youngest female prime minister in the world. We have free child education, all this sort of stuff. Mm. People, I remember when I was living in uh, Australia, they mm. were always saying, oh, how great the Finnish education system is. And uh, mm. we're so, oh, wow. Mm. Top of the world. Yeah, basically. Mm. But, you know, uh, so it's going to bring a lot of international people to come move here mm. and with more people coming here that means more business are going to be made more money is going to be available for the government through taxes so mm. there also needs to be a movement that like hey we need to bring more people here mm. you know we so that's something that as well like i would like to see because it's beneficial culturally economically and then it's the there's a lot of people who themselves. disagrees with that and wants to close the borders that's, <laughs> you that's know stupid. yeah it is what it is yeah So, we had a good chat. This is my first 2020 podcast. For the decade yeah, as well. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, and it's 1st of um, January, February. Yeah, 1st of February as well. So, um, what were your plans for this year? Like New Year's resolutions? And New Year's resolutions. Uh, one was, and we also spoke about this off camera, mm -hmm. was like less social media, more sort of something valuable like more offline life yeah less like online reading, life <laughs> reading or audiobooks or something mm. trying to sort of like learn learn everything you know other than that you know finish my studies mm. i'm currently also writing my thesis mm. for at school get that done uh but also you know just keep putting myself out there the thing is i can, it's so difficult to say exactly what i want to get through that But it's just like continue to put yourself out there because you never know what sort of opportunities like come come past you that you can just be like, oh, okay, yeah, like I'll jump on board with this, you know, and um, just find different platforms where I can sort of, and I've been using platforms thus far, sort of like saying, okay, like this is what I'm a professional in. There's like these platforms where you can sort of advertise yourself to startups, mm -hmm. for example. Patreon. Uh, yeah, like for mm -hmm. example, And uh, I mean, I had a guy uh, message me last week and he's sort of like uh, developing a new product and he sort of needs someone with a healthcare perspective to jump on board. Mm. I mean, nothing's confirmed yet, but just like, put, mm. like this is something that could become something, mm. you know? So it's just about putting myself out there and 
doing things like this, mm -hmm. trying to connect people and it's really cool that you you know reached out to me. Uh, I had like a plan to reach out to you as well mm -hmm. and to a lot of other guys in ship starter festival. So if any shipster is watching this, you know, make sure you you know leave me a DM or something. We can make this happen because you know I really connected with the people and the environment yeah. was awesome. And I'm really thank you for taking your time and you know reaching out to me. Uh, because I know you, you're super busy, so I don't mm. want to bother people at yeah. the same time. And like you said, you never know unless you try. Yeah. You never know where you can reach. And most of the time it's just showing up, showing up to the workplace, showing up, you know, sending that email and, yeah. you know, putting your clothes on and going to the school, mm. taking the hours, hours out. Uh, my plan for 2020 is to do editing and media for for living so I can mm. invest myself fully and get the 10,000 hours to be an expert on yeah, this yeah, thing. Yeah. Nice. And uh, overall the goal is to live a life where I do what I like. Thank you Ben for coming to this podcast. I really appreciate it and I uh, hope to see you soon in some of the vlogs. We've been uh, planning to make some interesting vlogs together and last but not least, I gotta thank my man, Roos, for making all the awesome beats. Go and check him out. Follow him on Instagram and YouTube and SoundCloud. You can hear all of his beats there. For now, stay blessed and see you in the next Convision podcast. Check it out.